Hello and uh, welcome back. In uh, this exercise now we're going to use similar data to what we've used in uh, exercise 5-2, 5-2a, uh, uh, but now we're going to also calculate uh, expected values of a student's grade in this course and also we'll look at variance. So again we've got a uh, grade distribution for a typical first year economics course. I have uh, our letter grades, that's numerical coding, so an A is equal to a 4, a B is equal to a 3, etc. And the number of students uh, receiving each of those particular grades. Now in this class, if we were to add up, oh, what's going on? If we add that up the number of students, here I would have a total of 50 students. And so the first thing that we need to calculate are those uh, relative frequencies. So here we'll get uh, those frequency, the, the probability uh, associated with each of these grades. So if I get my calculator, I'm going to have 9 out of 50 students, so 0.18. So basically all this means is that um, a randomly selected student uh, there has a 18% chance or a probability of 0.18 uh, that that student received an A uh, in this course. So as we go through and calculate the rest of these probabilities, I'm going to do this quickly because we've done this already in exercise 5.2. So this is going to be 0.22. And next one, 21 out of 50. 0.42, 20, uh, let's see, 1 out of 50, 0.02, and finally 8 out of 50, 0.16. Now you can verify for yourself if you need that this satisfies the conditions of a discrete probability distribution. None of my probabilities are negative, and you can add all of these up and they will sum to 1. Now, to compute the expected value of a grade in this course, now what we need to do, this is basically a weighted average of the possible values for our dependent uh, or our, our discrete variable. So what we're going to look at here is that frequency, f of x, multiply by x. x in this case is, of course, that grade point average. So what we need to do here is take, in this case, this is 0.18, so that frequency is 0.18 times 4. So that's 0.72. Our next one, x is 3 times the frequency 0 0.22, so 0.66. You should notice that this is just like a weighted average, right, of, uh, of the different possible values. We've looked at weighted averages in other exercise. I'm weighting each of these possible uh, values for my discrete variable. I'm weighting it uh, by its relative frequency. And then at the end, we're going to add all of them up uh, and divide by the number, of, uh, the number of observations that we have. So here again, I'm going to look at uh, 2 times uh, 0.42, so this is 0.84. Our next one is 1 times 0.02, so that's 0.02. And finally, uh, 0 times 0.16, well that's going to be 0. So now we're going to add all of these up, so here I'm going to be summing all of those weighted values. So I'll 0.02 plus 0.84 plus 0.66 plus 0.72 and I have a value of 2.24. So there's my expected value. Now the first thing that you'll probably notice is that well that doesn't actually correspond with any actual value that the discrete variable assumes. Nowhere do we have a value of point, uh, sorry, 2.24. It doesn't have to, and most likely it, it won't. It's, it's, uh, it's more likely that it's not going to be one of those values. Uh, but what we can see here is that on average, a student is a little bit better than, than a B, or sorry, a little bit better than a C uh, in this case. 
And with this data, that's really uh, all that we can do with this. Our expected value, so a randomly drawn student, um, we would expect that student to be around a B. Ah, I keep mixing them up, around a C, or just above a C. So that gives us our expected value of the student's grade. Now we need that to now calculate the variance uh, of grade points, or the variance of grade uh, in this course. So a couple more things that we need to calculate. One is the difference between the values for our discrete variable and the mean. Now here I've calculated that mean. So we've already got that one step uh, done. Then what we need to do is square those values. Then what we need to do is take those values that we've squared and multiply them by their relative frequencies and then we're going to add all of those up and somewhere down here will be our variance. Okay, So it's a few little tedious calculations. Um, it's good to get lots of practice on these because there's just so much room for for error. So let's go through, where can I put the calculator here? Let's put it over here for now. I'm going to have to move it as we go. So XOR, individual values minus the mean. So this is 4 minus 2.24. So that's 176. Okay, and the next one is 3 minus 2.24. 0.76, moving on, 2 minus 2.24, negative 0.24. We see a pattern emerging here, don't we? Next one is 1 minus 2.24, negative 1.24, and 0 minus 2.24, minus 2.24. Good. Now for the next column, we just have to square all of those. So 1.76 squared is 3 point, let me round this, 3.1. Now the next one is 0.76 squared, 0 0.58, 0.24, this is negative, but it doesn't matter if we put the negative in because we're squaring it anyways, so we can avoid that key press. Uh, 0 0.06, oops, 0 0.06, the next one is 1.24 squared, 1.54, 2.24 squared, 5.02. Okay, so now we have all of those differences squared. Now we need to weight them. So we're multiplying them by their relevant frequency. So here I'm going to put my calculator right here because I need uh, the frequency and I need those differences squared. So the first one, we'll start at the top. 0.18 times 3.1, so 0.56. So what I'm looking at here, just so we don't lose each other, I'm multiplying this value and this value together to get 0.56. The next one will be 0.22 times 0.58, so 0.13, whoops. Okay, and the next one, 0.42 times 0 0.06, 0 0.03. Okay, and our next one's 0 0.02 times 1.54, 0 0.03. And the next one, 0.16 times 5.02.8. Okay, and now we just need to add all of these up. So we're going to add these together to get that variance. 
And so that's going to be 0.56 plus 0.13 plus 0.03 plus 0.03 plus 0.8. <coughs> Excuse me. And there we go. Anticlimactic. 1.55 is our variance. Of course, we can get the standard deviation by just taking the square root of that, and I have 1.25. There we have it. So now we've got the variance, we've got the standard deviation, 1.25. We have our expected value. That's it, that's all there is to it. So we have some idea of the location of this discrete distribution. <coughs> Excuse me. And <coughs> we have some measure of the shape uh, of that distribution or the spread of those observations around that mean. Okay, I hope that this has been helpful as I lose my voice at the end of the video. <clears throat> I hope it's all made sense. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.